G'day and welcome to Wine Week. I'm Danny. And I'm Brad. And last week I wasn't here. I was up around the Rutherglen region. So mm. this week I'm going to kick off with a Rutherglen wine, one of two that I'll be doing. Brad wasn't with me, so he won't <laughs> be doing a Rutherglen wine. No, I'll be somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Now, Rutherglen, known for two things, giraffes and fortifieds more than anything else from the region. One uh, little winery, Scion, picked up trophies for their giraffe at the uh, Rutherglen Wine Show, the 122nd Rutherglen mm -hmm. Wine Show, the longest running wine show in Australia. They've been doing it for a while. They have. <laughs> but rather than talking about uh, the giraffe that Roly won all these trophies for, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different mm -hmm. because we do talk about the same things from Rutherglen all the while and it's a bit remiss to not look at something else. This is a rosé and it's actually made with orange musket grapes. Now, you would probably think straight away, this is going to be lolly water. <laughs> if anything could be further than the truth, I don't know what it is, because this is super dry. It's got a hint of red in there that comes actually from a splash of giraffe, and it is bone dry. It is very French. Once you open up this, you're not going to mistake it for many other Australian rosés, because it just doesn't taste like that. It's much more kind of uh, in the vibe of as I say, bone dry and a really, uh, a rosé aim very much at having with food, not just as an aperitif. So if you're looking for something as this summer starts to uh, poke its nose above the horizon, this one might be a ripper, sub $20 and from a winery that's going to definitely cause some waves out in the marketplace. Yeah, they've really sort of burst onto the scene with some great wine, so I'm looking forward to trying this rosé. It's fun and bloody good. <laughs> Okay, from somewhere that's really, really warm, because those would know that Rutherglen gets quite warm in summer, to somewhere a bit cooler, and that's the great southern region of uh, WA. Now, it does get warmer up in the north, but down south, they're producing some really good cool climate wines, and this is an example of one of the Shiraz coming out of the region. This is by the guys at Zabragas. Now, you might recall, we actually had a look at the 2007 Zabragas Shiraz, which did quite well on the show circuit, including was a finalist in Jimmy Watson. Well, they backed it up in 2008, and they got this one, the 2008 Shiraz, through to the uh, the finals of the Jimmy Watson as well, and it did quite well in the uh, the Royal Melbourne Show. Now you can see why this is a really lovely, approachable wine right now for 2008 for a young Shiraz. But at the same time, it's uh, it's got some really nice complexity for for a young wine. Now this is a um, a real bargain too. Price point sub $20, um, and for a wine of this quality, um, the guys at Zabragas can be really proud of it. They've been doing their work for a little while, but a lot of their grapes have been going sort of on contract to some of the other more well-known producers in Margaret River, but, uh, but these guys are doing some great work on their own with this Shiraz in particular. So 2008, another good vintage and one to really look out for. Yeah, and they also do a ripping Riesling that we've also mm. had a look at in the show. Some great stuff coming out of there. Now, as I said at the start, Rutherglen, really known for giraffes and fortifieds, and we we're going to look at something a little bit different. Stanton and Colleen, definitely one of the best known in the region for their fortifieds, their vintage port especially, mm, absolutely yummy. top <laughs> shelf stuff. But this is the Prince Reserva, and this is a table wine actually made with many of the grapes that are normally kind of reserved for fortifieds. A whole bunch of Portuguese grape varieties, including um, Tariga Nacional and Suzeo, these sorts of things that actually we just don't see in table wines in Australia at all. This is really different, really interesting, and a great wine. Now, it's not super cheap. $45 uh, you know, is RRP, $40-odd if you're a Cellar Club member, as so many people are, just to get their hands on the, uh, the vintage ports that these guys put out but a really, really interesting wine and great at the same time. Not just interesting in as far as, you know, open that up and kind of say to your mates, well, that I've, had, I've had that. <laughs> this is the sort of wine that you'll really want to drink again and again. Made for the short to medium term, you know, two to four, five years sort of cellaring time, unlike their VPs, but a great wine. Um, lots of flavour kind of, you know, I guess pushing a little bit towards that spicy kind of Tempranillo thing, but at the same time, lots and lots going on in there. Berries, oak, really gorgeous, really worth a look, small quantities, so if you can get your hands on one of these, or the 09 that's about to hit the marketplace also, 
do so because that really amazing, really good value, even at forty forty five dollars, a great wine. Yeah, it, it might be a little hard to track down, but believe me, it's worth it just to, to try something a bit different. Yeah, great one. Anyhow, that's it for this week on Wine Week. Next week, I think I'll talk about something I did when I kind of scooted outside of Rutherglen down to Beechworth. But hopefully you'll join us then. See you next week.